Augustine Pereira used to have more company on his olive farm in southern Spain. But in recent years, many of the young people who worked here have left in search of better jobs. The government has to help us, otherwise small towns are going to be empty. The only people remaining are the elderly. There isn't enough work in other industries either. And many of those who aren't earning receive little or no support from the government. I've been jobless for six months. I haven't been getting any unemployment benefits. And at the age of 41, I have nothing. And I've had to borrow money from my mother. That's really sad. I want politicians to help me. This neighborhood needs jobs. Spain's unemployment levels have improved since 2013, but they're still relatively high at 14 percent. That's twice as much as the 7 percent average for the Eurozone. Youth unemployment in Spain is even higher at 33 percent. Yet in the run-up to the elections, political parties are focusing on the separatist movement in Catalonia, not on jobs and pensions. They talk a lot about Catalonia, but they don't talk about what really interests the people. Education, health, transport and support for the elderly. Analysts say the incoming government will have to hike taxes and implement austerity measures like pension cuts and layoffs to bring down debt levels. Spain's debt to GDP ratio is at 98 percent, one of the highest in the Eurozone. And that may be why many politicians don't want to talk about the economy. But far-right candidates are gaining popularity by blaming immigrants for taking jobs from locals. We need people to work here, but we don't need illegal workers and delinquents. Recent surveys show no party is likely to win an outright majority, given the deep divisions forming a coalition government could take weeks, if not months. And that means state support for pensioners, farmers and unemployed people won't come anytime soon. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Let's get more on this now from Daniel Lacaya, who joins us from Madrid. He's the chief economist at Tresis and also a candidate for the former governing People's Party. Welcome back to the program, Daniel. Even though Spain's economy is slowing down, the current outlook does seem quite positive. The European Commission is forecasting growth of around 2% this year. How would you describe Spain's current economic situation? Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. The, the economic situation is uh, that of a, of a more severe slowdown than was initially expected. If you look, for example, at today's job report, uh, today's numbers of unemployment, uh, it is quite disheartening that the uh, unemployment is back uh, rising back again. It is also quite uh, a concern that youth unemployment, female unemployment is, is going up. I after the wrong policies of the last uh, three months in which the governing party, the Socialist Party, decided to massively hike taxes on job creation. So I think that uh, the, the, the outlook of the economy is, yes, uh, it is likely that the economy might continue to grow. It has quite a bit of tailwind. However, you know, we cannot be complacent because, as you very well know, and as the report was showing before, uh, Spain tends to enter into crisis a little bit later than other countries in the Eurozone, but when it does, it does very abruptly if the policies are the wrong ones. Now, as well as a chief economist, you're also running as a candidate for the People's Party. You've been touted in the Spanish press uh, as a future finance minister for the country as well. So if, say, you did take the reins at some point, what would you change about Spain's current economic policies? Mm -hmm. The current economic policies are the wrong ones because they don't take into account the reality of, of the economy in Spain. And what is that reality? You've mentioned a couple of those factors in the report. First, we have extremely uh, small and fragile companies, very vulnerable companies. The SMEs in Spain are much smaller than the average of the Eurozone or of the OECD. And also the large companies are small. As such, it is very difficult to create 
create jobs in environments in which the economic cycle changes. The other problem is a very high tax wedge on families and on investment. A very high tax wedge that is that is always uh, justified by socialist governments in particular as uh, acceptable because they say that they collect very uh, less taxes than the average of the eurozone. However, the reason why we collect less uh, uh, taxes than the eurozone is because we have much smaller companies and we have higher unemployment. So what we need to do is tackle those two factors: the the structure of the of the corporate of the SMEs and uh, and uh, uh, labor market, and at the same time reduce taxes in order to attract investment, uh, make the economy more dynamic, and uh, and reduce those structural problems of the Spanish economy. We have been able to do that in the past, as you said before. The the economy was recovering quite strongly, but we cannot go back to the complacency of 2008 because Spain doesn't have a second chance. Now, the issue of Catalonia's independence is still very much a live one in Spain. How big of an issue was that during this election campaign? Yes, it is true that the the the, the situation of uh, of the. Uh, separatist movement in Catalonia and the different uh, uh, proposals from uh, some of the parties have been a, a key factor. And the reason why it's a key factor is because there is a very high likelihood that, uh, as you said before, no party is going to have a clear majority. And if the Socialist Party wins, uh, many fear that they will have to reach agreements with separatist parties that will demand level of, uh, let's say, unequal treatment compared to other regions that would exacerbate those differences between regions and even worse, uh, put even further the, the agenda of separatism, of secession. Um, it is clearly one, an important factor because uh, in the left and in the centre-right, uh, there is in general uh, uh, quite a concern that there, that yes. there could be some level of underground agreement between the socialists and the separatists to, to uh, further the agenda of secession. Interesting. Okay, not long now until the polls open. Daniel Lacaye, thanks very much for your time.